Yo, what's up, people? Man, how y'all been? How y'all been? Man, I've been so busy. I've been trying to get back. I think I'm going to start doing it once a week now or something. Keep me on some type of routine. You know, I'm glad y'all tuning in once again. This your boy, Alan J. Hamilton, coming back at you with another self-development, self-improvement. Uh, you want to try to change your life for the better. Uh, you're looking for directions. You're looking for some type of way to, to increase your value into the world. You know what I mean? Videos like this is, is what help, you know. And like I say, there's plenty of people out there that's doing it. But it's when somebody that you know, somebody that you can relate to or you can actually talk to, I think that's more beneficial than uh, trying to seek somebody else out that may be miles and miles and miles away. But anywho, you know, um, we still doing some big things. Um, we steady on the progress of getting this next business started. Uh, me and my business partner, who I will introduce to you all later, um, at a later time, we coming up with something good, and I can't wait to put it out there. I I feel we ready. I feel I'm ready to go with it, and I'm ready to just take off with this thing because even in my own life, you know, I look and see what I'm doing and where I'm at and where I where I want to go and where I want to be in the future, you know, and um, doing this business will actually help me get there. And help you too, you know, if you're watching it, if you're keeping, if you're keeping up. And I know I just, I be so busy with doing other stuff and going out of town and driving and, you know, things with family and this and that. That sometimes I just, by the end of the day, I just be worn out. And so I, yesterday I wanted to do one, but I was up reading. I said, man, I'm just going to call it, you know. And, uh. I just went to bed. So here I am tonight, got dog it. And we um we gonna turn this thing up. Um tonight it's just gonna be some encouragement for you, you know. Um uh, sometimes everybody need encouragement and yeah, hey, we all get down, even me, you know, even I got to have somebody above me to, to pull my strings or pull my rope and tell me, Come on man, you got it. You know. So uh, I'm gonna start by telling this little this little story about this about this girl. See, all right, this was way back when in um, the 1800s, and it was a guy by the name of Darby. He was the nephew of an uncle who owned a mill. See, and he, the uncle he had some sharecroppers, which were colored sharecroppers at the time living on the estate and so this one particular day him the nephew and the uncle was in the mill working and so this little colored child comes in you know silently creepily she comes in and she just stands by the door well the uncle yells at the little girl you need to go on now Go on, get out of here. And she says, my mammy's got to have 50 cent. And so he said, well, I ain't giving it to you. And so she, he said, no, go ahead on, go on now. She said, yes, sir. But she still just stands there. So. He went back to working, doing his thing. He was pouring some grain up into the mill and whatnot. And so he got so busy working that he forgot the little girl. Never, She never left. She never left at all. So he looked back over there. He was like, now, didn't I tell you to go on home now? He said, if I got to tell you again, I'm going to come over there and give you a whipping. So she said, yes, sir. <laughs> but she still just stood right there. So he picked up a barrel stave. And he was going over to her, and he was finna give her what, you know, give her the business, as we say. Now, if you don't know a barrel stave, a barrel stave is that wooden piece that's on a barrel. And, you know, you got the bands that go around the barrel. 
But those wooden slats that go up and down, that's that's a, a stave. So he picked on one of them, and he was finna go over there and, and let the little girl have it. And you know how it was back then between blacks and whites, you know. It just wouldn't happen. So the nephew sitting over there, he like, I know my uncle. He crazy. He finna give it to this girl. So he was thinking he was finna witness something just crazy. If you hear that noise in the background, that's my dog drinking water. We'll wait for her to finish. She, she decided to wait till I started videoing and she want to start being active. Okay, so he picked up the barrel stave and he was going to go over and let her have it. And as he walks his way over there to her, she takes a step forward, look him dead in his eye, and say, my man has got to have that 50 cent. And so to his amazement, he didn't know what to do. So he just stopped. And he stood there and looked at the little girl. The little girl looked at him. He looked at her. She looked at him. <laughs> and he put the stave down. Reached in his pocket. And took out a half dollar. Now, you know, I, you know, half dollars was the stuff. But back then, it was just money like a dollar. So he took out a half dollar and gave it to her. So she takes it. She puts it in her pocket. And not taking his her eyes off of him. She bagged up slowly and creeped on at the door. And after she left, the uncle, in his amazement, he went and sat down somewhere and thought about the whipping that he just took. Because the nephew was sitting over there thinking, now nah, ain't another day in my life I thought I would have seen a colored girl, a child, stand up to a grown white man. And I actually later tell about it. But that's what happened. So moral of the story is never give up. Which is what the title of this talk is going to be. Or this little encouragement is going to be about. You cannot give up. And just like that little girl, she didn't give up on getting her mama that 50 cent. Even if it would have cost her a whipping. And maybe she wouldn't have got it anyway if it would have it would have happened, you know. But to the nephew, it was so amazing because he was looking at what was in that child that made her stay right there after he told her twice to get out of here, and you ain't getting no fifty cent. She stayed right there until she got it. Now, how can you apply that to yourself? Can you think of a time where you ever gave up on something when you know you could have had it? Something that you always wanted, something that you always wanted to be, something that you aspired to have, and you didn't get it because you let it slip between your fingers? Because you didn't stand up right there? See, if, if it's something that you want, and you want it bad enough, you're going to do whatever it takes to have it. But it depends on what that is and how much that means to you, on how much effort you put in to have it. You can say you want the finer things in life. You can say you want the intangible things in life, which is like love and happiness, freedom, you know. But what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? Are you willing to stand in the place and face the adversities that's going to come? Because it's all going to come. And it's one thing you have to realize with adversity. It's always going to be there, whether you try or not. You know, whether you want something or not. You can, you can work. You can have the audacity to say, I don't want nothing in life. But you're still going to face adversities. You can say, I want to inspire everything and I want everything that life has to offer. And you still gonna face adversities. You still gonna face challenges. So it's like the good, like the good man said, 
You know, life is like a ball game. You can be in the bleachers or you can be on the field. But if you're going to be anywhere, you might as well, in this game of life, you might as well be on the field and have fun, you know? So how much does these things that you aspire to have and what it is that you want to be, what, what are you willing to, to, to risk, you know? What cost are you willing to pay for it? First of all, you have to know what you want in order for you to know which direction you need to go in order to get it. You got to know what you want. You got to know what you're shooting for. You know, that's like playing basketball with no goal. You know, what are you shooting at? You know, what goal are you trying to hit? And if you don't have a goal and you just aimlessly out there trying this, trying that, trying this, trying that, and without some type of mission to accomplish, you know, because you can be in that type of state. I wish my dog would just stop walking. Uh, you can be in that in that state of mind and be trying to find your purpose, and that can be your mission. See, but if you have no goals, no aspiration for anything, no ambition for nothing, you just out here trying this, and you over here. You work at this job for a little while, then you quit that, and you're over here at this job for quit. Don't don't you know people like that? Every week they got a new job, you know? When it's like, well, if you stay at the first job you had, you would have been something. You've been a supervisor, a manager by now. But now you want to come over here because it's paying 50 cents more or come over here because that's paying a quarter more than that, you know? And you always have to start right back at the bottom, you know, because you don't have any experience to, to build upon, you know, for people to see. But knowing what you want, knowing what you're going after, will help you get to where you want to be because you know your destination. You can take a ship, you know, and you can put a crew on, you can put a captain and give it a destination. Nine times out of ten, with those three with those three things working together, the ship is going to get to where it's supposed to be. But then you take that same ship, you give it no destination, you give it no captain, no crew, you don't give it anything. You just turn it on. If it ever leaves the port, it won't go anywhere. You know, and you don't want to be that boat that's just out there in the sea of this, this life just floating around. And you just just so happen to bump up against land and just so happen to make it. Because it takes too long. Know where you're going. Know what you want. Know what you're seeking after and go after it. You know, life is too short and unpredictable not to, because at any point in time, you could be gone like that. And then what are people going to say about you? Are you going to be convicted at the end of your life? And people say, I saw what they was doing. I see the life that they was living. I seen what they was going and what they was trying to be. They wasn't like everybody else who sat on the sidelines watching and spectating. They was out there in the game and they was playing it. See, it ain't about all this stuff people want to talk about hustling. People who know what they want, it, it, it is no hustle. It's a challenge. It, it ain't about grinding and hustling. Because if you know what you want to do, it's not a hustle. I don't have to hustle you for anything, and I don't have to hustle life for it. Because it's already there for me to take my purpose and my destination, uh, my destiny, I mean, my destiny for being here has already been laid out. I have to find that path and take it to get there. Or if that path has not been laid yet, then I'm the one to make the groove to get there so other people can follow me to do that. See? That's the power in knowing what you want because you can take something and improve upon it. Say an idea that somebody has, you ain't got to reinvent the wheel, but you can improve on that product. Say it's the alternator for a car. Well, if you can produce a way to make it more efficient, make it even better, good for you. Go ahead. That could be your million dollar idea. But if nobody else ever thought about it, 
then you can lay the path work for other people to follow you and then you be the originator instead of the spectator. See, that's the power in knowing what you want because you're not out here going on the wayside, heading straight to your path and can't nobody veer you off from that only if you stay on that path and you don't let the naysayers you don't let family and friends with negative vibes come into your life and try to shift you from doing what you want to do. Another thing, follow the path to get there. You know, you got to stay focused. You got to have directions. And you can't give up when you meet those challenges that are going to come. You know, and people talk about this every time. The most successful people talk about it all the time is, Knowing that you have to expect the hard times and the barriers to be there because those that's what's going to build you up in order for you to overcome them. See, it's only to test you and see how you think or you think critically. Are you going to, um, are you going to fold, you know, or are you going to just going to take it, take it lightly? See, so, as you go through this thing, this thing we call life here, and you face those challenges, sometimes it may be with your heels, children, family, friends, or whatnot. Other thing, you know, you have to you have to keep going, because even the Bible says, storms may endure for a night, or trouble may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So as long as you can endure through the night and that trial or that tribulation that you're going through, just think of it. Joy, joy is going to come. But even then, while you're going through your joy, don't think that's it. Because guess what? Trouble is the next thing that's going to come right behind it. So you have to magnify those joyous moments and be able to educate yourself in that time. So when that trouble comes again, you will know how to take it. And I say this because I apply it to my life. I look for the trouble. I do. I I try to I, I try to see when the trouble is going to start. I try to I uh, sort of try to um, you know prevision it. You know I can't think of the word, but I try to expect it and try to cut it off. You know, or when I'm in it, and I know I'm in it, I just be thankful for all the good things and the good times. You know, they have that I've experienced. Because if I don't, then it's going to weigh me down. And I don't want to be weighed down by that. I want to bust in his face and go ahead and move on in. You know, go on through it. And so that's how I try to do it for myself. You know, I expect it to come. Because when I expect it to come, then I'm more, I got my, my, my defense ready so that I, I can I can pursue through it, you know, and it don't phase me as much because I'm like, dang, man, I'm all bogged down and, you know, having a little pity party by myself, you know, I'm thinking about it. No, hey, I knew it was going to happen. I'm prepared for it. Shoot, let's, let's, let's figure it out and get over with. Guess what? We got some joy that's coming after it, so let's hear it and get to the joyous part. Uh, another thing is to be fearless. You know, take the risk. Get out there. Get into that, uh, the, uh, that um, out of your comfort zone. Get in that uncomfortable zone. Wallow in it. Sit in it. Play in it. You know, because the more uncomfortable you are, the more uncertain you are, actually, the more critical you'll be for not making the next mistake. Because you don't want to end up in that feeling again. But yet, it's going to come anyway. So then you'll know how to deal with it, see? And so just like that little girl who probably knew she was going to face some opposition, but her main thing was, hey, mister, I'm not leaving here without that 50 cent. <laughs> and I don't know how her mama was. Her mama could have been a booger bear too. And she was, she probably told her, girl, if you come back, if you come back here without that 50 cent. And so... Like I say, she would have paid the ultimate price, you know, during them days. She might not have came back home. But yet and still, she stood up 
And she got that 50 cent for her mama because she did not fear him. Now, I ain't going to say she wasn't scared, but she didn't show any fear. And because of her actions, he stopped him in his tracks. He stood there and she got what she wanted. When are you going to get what you want out of life? When are you going to start applying yourself to change your habits, to change your thinking, to change the things that you don't do in life that you know you should be doing? Or stop doing the things you know you shouldn't do and do what you know you're supposed to do. You got to stop wasting time. I told one of my this the other day. I said, look here, man, stop wasting time. You know, find your purpose. I can't tell you what it is. I can see certain attributes in you. But the other side of it is, it's all on you, you know? I can sit here and tell you good things and shoot positive vibes your way till you blew in the face up one side and down the other. But at the end of the day, until you make the decision to take that first step, it's all going, you know, it's all just good feelings, you know? But the best feeling is knowing you accomplished something that you always wanted to accomplish. You, you, you made it to the finish line. And you start another race all over again. Because it's not done until you land in that ground. Then you can call it done. But, you know, I just want to encourage somebody out there somewhere just for a little while who may be watching this, who may be going through something or feel like you kind of at a plateau in life. Because we all get there and we all, um, we all feel that way. And so it's it's good for us to have somebody that, you know, can can relate to us and how because I've been there, been there plenty of times. I've just grown so so educated on it, you know, not that I'm just the smartest person in the world, but I understand it now to the point to where I can enter into it and I'm still okay, you know. I figure out a plan for my problems instead of letting the problems playing me, you know, so, um, just know what you want in life, follow the path to get there, and be fearless the whole time, don't give up, don't ever give up, no matter what anybody say, and like I always say, I can, I will, I must, say it to yourself every day, all day, three times a day, when you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, after you get through hollering at the kids, while you're watching TV, I can, I will, I must. That's it. Well, all right, y'all. I think I done talked to y'all long enough. I'm finna get up off of here. I'm gonna do something else. And uh, I'll holler at y'all later.